Welcome, inquiring artistic minds, to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and I'm excited to bring you a beginner series in pastel. And it's prompted by you guys. I did a little um, survey, and you guys were emphatic that you would love some beginner art lessons. So first, let's go over this very simple supply list. Basically, you will need an apple. I'll have a photo that you can refer to. You'll also need some gray drawing paper, pencil or charcoal, and six pastels. I will be going over these colors and values more as I paint. I will be keeping this real time so as to also help the beginner. All right, here's my model, just a juicy apple. I'm using a Geoconda pencil. It, I don't think this one was charcoal, um, but it's part of this uh, particular pencil set. But you could use whatever you have. It's basically just to get a sketch in. Now, I like to hold my pencil uh, kind of upwards like this, if you notice the positioning of my hand. I also use an X-Acto blade to sharpen my pencil to get that long uh, pencil lead part of it so that I can shade better. Now, take notice that I am making a mark at where I want the top of the uh, apple to be and the bottom of the apple to be. That little technique will help to ensure you get your apple on the page where you want it to be. Have you ever tried to draw something and uh, you, you start in this one little section and you realize, oh my gosh, I've got it way bigger than I realized or wanted or I've got it way smaller than I wanted. So kind of making some guidelines with a top and a bottom mark really helps. And as always, practice, practice, practice. My apple was leaning a little bit. It was just kind of the way the apple was. And uh, I decided to kind of correct that a little bit as I added the pastels. Okay, so now I'm just getting in that simple little line that um, represents kind of that um, divot where the stem comes out of. And then just a very simple stem. Keep in mind, this phase is very, very simple. Now all I'm doing is kind of I think I'm just correcting here and um, kind of establishing. I, I decided I, I didn't want the stem where it was. Again, that was making it look like it was leaning more than I wanted. So get the form correct before you start to commit to pastel and kind of get just get that apple the way it just feels right and um, simple lines, nothing too complicated. And then after we get that simple form of the apple, then is when we're going to just do some basic, very basic shading. Now, all we're doing now is working with value. Once I get, I'm still working on this apple. I, I decided I need a little more to the back, and, um, and then I think I'm going to get started shading now. So basically with the shading, I want you to, oh, I'm drawing out the shadow. Pay attention, though, um, to... If you were, as I'm sketching out the shadow, if you were to look at the apple, whether it's my photo or one that you choose, you're trying to distinguish three different values. And uh, now is when I'm going to start working on that. We're looking for the darkest value, which is what I'm starting to shade in now. I actually would have preferred charcoal, I realized after I started this. Um, I like charcoal. Uh, you can actually really kind of blend, smudge it with your finger, and get a kind of a nice uh, little value study with it. But this, uh, this worked fine too. This was really just like a really dark, like a black pencil. And um, so I'm looking for the darkest value, medium value, and lightest value. That's all we're really looking for here. Also, while drawing, it really helps to keep in mind that an apple, I guess we just think of it as a ball, but it, it is faceted. It has um, different planes to it. And so you don't always have to draw super curvy lines. Um, we're basically just shading in a way that represents those sections of the apple. Now I'm just getting in a little bit of the shadow. If you squint your eyes, you can see there is a little dark area at the, um, the little uh, indention where the stem is and a little bit that goes up around the back of it. Now I am emulating the form of the apple here a bit with um, some of my lines. Some of them will be a little bit uh, more curved, uh, but basically it's just all about value right now. And really that's all this is. It's a little value study before we get started applying the pastel. The color of the paper, the gray tone of the paper, is really like your middle value. And then I have really just added dark and um, 
uh, kind of medium values to it as well with the uh, with the pencil and how I'm smudging it here. And this is what I was saying I like to do sometimes with charcoal is uh, it does blend a little bit better than this does, but um, but this worked for the purposes of, um, of this little demonstration. All right, so basically we've just got a, a basic idea of the apple. Obviously we see where is the light source coming from. I should have mentioned that before. That's very important. It's very easy to see in this little photo down here because it's right where you see that major highlight on the upper right side of the apple there and of course we have the shadow that's being cast from the apple on the left side now I'm not going to get real specific with edges here and that's another thing I'm, I'm going to be talking about as I paint is um, something called lost edges now here's a sample of the pastels this is the you call it a dark red or a burgundy it's just going to be your darkest value of that apple and if you look at the uh, the image you can see it is kind of dark like like a dark maroon now there is the medium value of the apple and while this apple does have a whole lot of different values going on in it it's best to just focus um, really basic at first there's our medium to light orange it's not i'd say it's a medium orange and uh, now just a light value i'm using kind of a creamy color uh, but it could have more of a color that's a little bit more blue or green or whatever it's just got to be a lighter value you notice how we've definitely got three different values going on there we've got the dark burgundy we've got the medium red and orange and we've got a light value now this is going to be for the shadow it's just a darker blue i wouldn't say it's a super dark value i'd say it's a medium to dark blue now this is a medium blue sorry you can't see it real good down there with the apple but it's just going to be your um, medium cooler blue temperature also kind of for the shadow my apple happened to be sitting down on a um, kind of a teal uh, tablecloth so or towel so that's kind of why i went with that blue color all right so now we're just working on getting these the darkest value watch how i'm emulating the apple the shape of the apple i'm also keeping a very light touch here now even though i drew out the apple with the pencil that was really just for a guideline you're going to notice when i'm working with this pastel i don't make any lines other than the stem at the very end and uh, i'm keeping my pressure very light and i'm keeping my strokes directional all right so there is the darkest value now i'm going to the medium value uh, i'm using the side of it too i break my pastels and um, actually sometimes i get a little too small but um but i'm using it to get that middle value of the apple and again i'm thinking about if i was rubbing my hand or my pastel across that apple how would it curve or how would it um how would I have to move my hand or my fingers or pastel um, to get that uh, motion or that direction of the apple? And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm emulating. Uh, it's, it's like I do it in my mind and I let my hand follow. Um, so still getting in this middle value red. Now I want you to notice I'm doing some of the middle value over the darker value and that's an important lesson in pastel painting we typically work dark to light laying your darkest values down first now you can see how I'm just gently blending the lighter and the darker um, to kind of get a, a, a different value there it's not as dark as like the beneath part of the apple and it's not as medium value as the the plain medium value that I have just on the more of the right side now I've got my little bit of orange here and I'm going to use that you notice how where the stem comes out that's a little bit lighter in there you see that the the light from actually it's my studio light is kind of shining down in that little area and it's also shining on the upper right of this apple so I'm again making those little directional lines um, to kind of give that feeling of roundness or a curve to the apple and once again i'm blending this medium value um, orange over the red that i've already put down and you see how that's already giving an indication we've we've just used three pastel colors here and uh, three values here as well 
So um, now I'm actually correcting the shape of my apple a little bit. Remember how I said when I drew it? Uh, I mean, you want to get it generally right, but you, you do have the ability to correct some as well. Now also, too, um, like I mentioned before, I don't have any lines that I've drawn. I've used the sides of the pastel for this entire process of painting this. And I think sometimes, uh, I'm just reinforcing the darks here, I think sometimes that's why people, they get a little confused or think, pastel painting, how do you call it painting? Um, people think of it as drawing. But drawing is, is usually more using linear marks and um, painting is also covering up usually the entire surface or mostly and also these broader strokes you're really using a pastel very much like you would a brush in painting now I am using the darker blue that I picked out for the shadow and uh, all I'm doing here is just basically um, kind of sketching in with the side of my pastel again using the broader side of the pastel just kind of giving a general indication of where the shadow is and again trying not to make an edge or a I shouldn't say an edge um, a line um, a single individual line now just to um, kind of soften up that shadow a little bit um, I usually don't blend with my fingers in regular pastel painting but sometimes um, I like to soften soften up a shadow or something because I want this apple to be more prominent than the shadow. Now I'm going to the middle value blue. Here's where I said you could see that blue a little bit better now. And um, I'm again just using the side of it to kind of just get a general idea of the blue that I saw underneath. It was actually a teal color, but it doesn't matter. Even if you pick a different color here, just make sure it's kind of a medium value. I thought the blue went along well with the, the shadow that's coming from the apple too. Now you'll notice I'm blending a little bit of that blue onto the um, the edges of that shadow just because it all kinds of um, things tend to um, blend together with light and with shadow and uh, and now you see we've got um, more of a three-dimensional feel to this apple because of the shadow and because of the other blue that we've laid down now just I could leave this apple just as is and we could have just used uh, even less colors here um, but I'm gonna use this right here to get that little bit of reflection that is on um, that part where the light was hitting where kind of behind where the stem comes out um, and just little simple strokes here and again kind of keeping a soft touch and now I'm just kind of paying attention to where that uh, I'm using the side of the pastel of where that highlight is on the right side of the apple there. Uh, so, you know, this really, when you start adding a little shadow underneath and you start adding these little highlights, then you really start getting that three-dimensional effect of it feeling more real, like it's not just flat on that paper, that it's coming off of the surface. And um, for these next few, I think, minutes, I was just kind of fine-tuning a little bit. You notice how that apple has some stripes in it that were a little bit lighter. You want to be careful not to get your, um, I'm showing how it gets dirty, sometimes you have to wipe it off. Um, you want to be careful not to get your, that, that light value orange or medium value orange. I don't want to get too much of it over on the left side of the apple because you notice, look at the photo, that's really in shadow. So we want to keep that um, more shadowy on the left side and darker values. Um, so again, this is really starting to look like a little apple. Again, this is not going to be a super advanced type of lesson. It's just to get the basics, but really the basics are so important. Uh, once you start uh, uh, getting past some of the simple lessons that we need to keep in mind, or you, if you ignore those, uh, your paintings, you'll, you'll get more frustrated for one, and you won't keep that painterly style. As I always say, big shapes, less detail first, working to smaller shapes and more detail last. Now, because this apple, some of the light or some of the color from the apple will be reflected onto your little tablecloth or, or whatever's on the apple, um, I'm just getting a little bit of that um, red and orange, just very, very lightly. Um, again, trying to keep it, um, not making uh, individual lines, but just keeping a real soft, soft touch as I'm adding this. And then again, I can take that 
and soften it up with a little bit of the blue on the top. Now you see how these have been working? When I put down a dark color and then I add a lighter color on top of it, how it just kind of blends together. So in the future, you know, other than certain areas where you might blend with your fingers, remember that you can blend with your pastels and uh, keep that very loose painterly look. Also too, the more you blend, whether it be your fingers or with pastels, the more layers you add, as you continue to add layers, you lose the brilliance of the color of the pastels. So um, trying to not over layer is a, is a really good uh, method or strategy to use with pastel painting. Having an efficiency of stroke, not just uh, painting willy-nilly and then correcting and correcting so that uh, you end up with mud when you're done. Now again, I could have left the background just the color of the gray paper, which was kind of nice, but I thought, you know, let's go ahead and add, you know, where I actually did have some light um, kind of reflecting on a wall behind um, the apple. So I thought, you know what, yeah, let's just add a little bit more dimension to this and um, make it, you know, a little bit more interesting. And now, once again, I'll be using this blue pastel now to kind of soften up uh, some of that area to the left in the background because more of the highlight was um, really on the right side in my particular um, viewpoint of looking at the apple. So I'm just kind of softening some of that white, not covering it all up, or not white, you know, it's cream, it's a lighter value and um, just softening it up so that I'm getting a nice gradation between the light, the medium, and the darker shadow there. And now again, I'm blending a little bit more with this pastel because I did have it a little bit lighter. Um, if you notice in the reference photo, see how it's lighter? The wall behind it is lighter on the right side than it is on the left side. Uh, and not that I have to represent that exactly like I see it, but it's just a um, general, general guide here. And now I will be adding the little stem. And I needed for this, all of my pastels were a little bit too chunky to add that stem. So I have a little new pastel. Um, they're made by Prismacolor and they're in you pastel. They're harder and so you usually can get a little bit more of a fine edge to it and uh, it wasn't black it was actually just a little bit darker than that burgundy the darkest value that I used up there um, at the top right of the where I put all the pastels down now I'm just kind of uh, shaping that little stem a little bit a little better there um, and uh, you can actually if you have something too thick you can kind of carve it down with whatever the color is behind it like that white um, but anyway so just get you a a general stem in with um, kind of the appropriate direction of the stem and now I'm adding a little bit more of that burgundy darker uh, red in the cast shadow and now notice how when I do that I haven't added any purple to this painting at all but you know sometimes people say you can't mix colors with pastels well you sort of can because adding that uh, burgundy in the shadow not well sort of where I'm working now too and adding that uh, the blue and the burgundy together are gonna make a little bit of a uh, an illusion of purple can you kind of see that and uh, purples are always great for shadows and blue because typically cooler colors are in the shadows and cooler colors also recede they tend to go back in the distance just like mountains when you see mountains in the distance that are blue you're like why do they look blue it's because there's so much atmosphere between you and the distant mountains but uh, but blue colors are give the illusion of things receding and or, or uh, cool colors and warm colors give the illusion of coming forward just like this apple that's coming forward so as I'm finishing this up I thought I'd also mention uh, for you to watch this again review this a few times practice it um, practice different fruit you know but with the same concept of a dark value medium value light value and maybe some colors for shadows and also keep in mind the concept about what's called lost edges again how I am I'm not really drawing I'm putting in more shapes and while this has been somewhat of a simple lesson I think a very valuable lesson because these basics are very important and I am so appreciative to you and your comments so let me know what you think 
And if you happen to be one of my patrons and you do this particular uh, little painting or exercise, I would love for you to share it in our Patreon group. And if you haven't become a member of my Patreon page, I'm just giving a little thank you and a shout out. This is just a little example of all the people who've become patrons of mine. And I can't thank you enough for your $5 a month support to me. It really does help me to keep these videos coming where I can focus more on my art and the YouTube channel really gets a benefit as well. It helps me to continue to bring the free videos here on YouTube as well. I hope this video blessed you and I hope you'll continue to find joy through your artistic explorations. Happy painting!